Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and thanks for joining us for the Photoshop for Video show, brought to you by CreativeCow.net. Today, we're taking our second look at the Camera Raw interface, so if you missed the first part, be sure to head on over to CreativeCow.net and watch the first episode in this series. Today, we're going to go a little bit deeper with what we could do with Camera Raw. So, we've opened up a raw file, and we've already done the basic adjustments in the first tab. Let's keep going. As we go through the tabs, they work from left to right, so we can go from our basic adjustments to our tone curve. And what you're seeing here is the ability to make a curve style adjustment. Just click on the point controls here, and as we pull, you'll see that different areas can open up or close down. Here we're going after the middle area, and up top we're going after the brights, pushing the bright areas darker, or opening them back up a little bit so they pop. That looks pretty good. You'll also see that we have several presets here, including linear and medium and strong contrast that can be useful to quickly pop the image there as such. There we go. I like the medium contrast, and let's just open up the brights a bit so they get a little overblown. That looks pretty good. On to our next tab is the ability to deal with detail, and this really covers things like sharpening. Now, one of the nice things about the RAW format is that it doesn't sharpen in the camera. After the fact, you can go in and adjust how sharp the details get. But what's important here is that you actually zoom in and look at the image at 100%. Now, sharpening is not an excuse for shooting out of focus pictures, but what it does is it helps counterbalance some of the softening that the camera sensors inherently add to the image. Let's zoom in here with the magnifying glass. And what we want to do is work at 100%. I'll just keep going here until we get to 100. That works pretty well there. Hold down the space bar and you get the hand tool, just like regular Photoshop. Here we have our sharpening. I could play with the amount of the sharpening, and as we drag more, you'll see that it increases. If you go too far, though, it'll start to look fake. So find a decent amount, and then play with the radius and the detail. Masking will help back that off just a little bit if you need to. The next area here in detail is noise reduction, and this is important. You see we're getting a little bit of color fringe at the edge there? So I could drag that noise reduction slider to cut down on some of that color fringing. That looks pretty good, and let's just do a little bit of luminance, and that helped. Noise reduction is very subtle, but useful, particularly if you have high contrast edges in a photo. Let's keep going. If you want to do a grayscale conversion, you can, which works out nice to do black and white. We also can do toning here, doing separate adjustments for highlights and shadows. So in this case, we can go ahead and pop the saturation in the brighter areas. Let's back that off just a little bit. That's pretty good. And let's put a little bit of hue shift in the shadowy areas there. There we go. A little more saturation. And what I did there is boosted the oranges just a little bit in the shadowy areas. We'll go ahead and fit that back to the view. Looking pretty good. Remember, you can always click Preview to toggle the before and after. And that's looking pretty good for us. Let's go back here to the curve real quick and back off that white. There we go. Good. And as we work our way through, we have things like lens corrections, which is useful if you have a vignette. You can go ahead and remove the shadow from the lens hood. Keep going, you've got the ability to actually store particular camera profiles if you're going to get that precise for a particular model of camera you shoot. In this case, a little too deep for today, but know that if you have particular settings for a particular camera, you can actually store those and automatically use them when the pictures are imported. And lastly is the ability to make our own presets so we can store these for a particular shoot. This is really useful if you have a bunch of photos shot in one location or by one photographer. This allows you to save a setting and use that as a default starting point for those images. All in all, very useful. Last things to point out here is we can do great things like cropping right inside of the Camera Raw interface. So if we want to push this in a little bit on this particular photo and really get towards the action, I can. There we go. Cropped it up. We can also take advantage and do some lens vignettes here if we want to do some stylized vignettes. Let's just go here and do post crop vignette, and we can go ahead and put this in here, darkening down the edges or brightening them up, no matter what we need for the particular look we're going after. I'm going to darken that down just a little bit and round it out. Great. That works really well. 
When we're all set, we can do one of two things. You can click Open Image to open this file up into Photoshop. The original raw file is untouched. You can always go back to it. You've not actually modified the camera raw file. What will open is a Photoshop file. You could save that as either a TIFF or a PSD. If you don't want to open up the files, you could simply click Done and go on to your next image. So, a lot of flexibility here. The ability to color correct, crop, post process, all with a camera raw file. Trust me, once you start to do this, you'll really see the power of shooting raw. My name's Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the Photoshop forums, ask questions, search for answers, and visit the podcast page where you can download the hands-on files. Plus, if you want to go a little bit deeper with Photoshop CS4, be sure to pick up the book Photoshop for Video, and you can download the free chapter from Focal Press's website to learn what Photoshop CS4 has to offer. Thanks again.